In this video, I want to demonstrate the black and white tool inside of raw therapy. Um, this is a companion to a blog post that I did about using raw therapy for black and white photo processing. The black and white tool is found in the colors tab. The colors tab is this one here, which is three interlapping, overlapping circles, excuse me. Um, you can open it down by clicking on it and turn it on by pressing the little circle beside it. This tool works by combining the desaturated red, green, and blue color channels in different ways. Um, all three of the methods available use different formulas and algorithms to do that, but the, the basic premise of this tool is that it works with the individual color channels and processes them. Um, the desaturation method is the simplest. It is simply a fixed percentage of each channel. The formula is at 0.299 times the red channel, 0.587 times the green channel, and 0.114 times the blue channel. The tools available inside this are the gamma correction and the before and after curve. These three tools are available regardless of which method you select. Gamma correction is something that you're going to want to do after you have gotten your photo the way you like it otherwise. This is the, um, it's intended to imitate how the paper responds to ink of different colors and allows you to fine tune the final look of your image. Uh, generally speaking, the way it works is that you can move it down and it will tend to darken, um, and up and it will tend to lighten. And it would do that differently for the different colors, allowing you to imitate different papers if you are um, sophisticated, more sophisticated than I am. One quick note. Is if you want to use the blue slider, you need to, you notice it didn't do anything there. You need to go to your color management tab and select uh, the working color profile to be SR. Um, it's just a quick tip. Um, and then it will do a little something. It, the blue, it's not quite as sensitive to the blue as it is to the red and green. Um, even if you do that. So the desaturation um, also allows you to do a before curve. This is a tone curve that would be used only in black and white so that when you turned on the black and white, turn on the black and white channel or the, the tool here, it will use the curve. And if you turn this off, it will go back to the original tone curve that you have set in your exposures panel. This allows you to, for example, work with a more contrast um, inside of black and white. Um, and then the after curve is applied after and again only in the black and white. So these two tone curves are specific to this tool and you can click them on and off just by selecting that. The second method is called the luminance equalizer. And this will take, take the image to be what they call a neutral gray. It's not identical to the desaturated. You notice there's some changes in the switch to this. The luminance equalizer allows you to adjust the individual colors for different brightnesses. You turn on the, the equalizer itself right here and select equalizer. Um, the equalizer's axis is essentially a flattened out color, color wheel. It goes from red around to red. You can change how bright an individual color is. For example, you notice that the Indian paintbrush is, is quite red. I can lighten that color by moving the red up I can darken that color by moving the red down. 
Um, the green leaves could be darkened by moving this down or lightened by moving it up. Obviously, once you've turned it black and white, you may forget the exact color. This tool has a color picker, and that's this little cross beside the arc. If you select that, there's a little triangle, or excuse me, square. And as you move it across, you'll notice that there's a white line that shows you where on the color wheel the part of the image falls. And so you can come in here. If you press control and press the left mouse button down, you can move the curve by pushing away from you to lighten and pulling toward you with your mouse to darken. So there's two ways you can adjust color with this, one using the color picker and the other using the point on the graph. So let's just do that. Do that. Um, if you want to do before and after, press this one that has an arrow and it will save the curve. You press the reset here and it'll flatten it out. And then when you press this, it will pull the saved curve in, allowing you to toggle back and forth between your selected things and the neutral gray image that you started with. Again, this will have the, the gamma correction, a before curve and an after curve available to you as well. The third method available is the channel mixer. The channel mixer will open in relative RGB with one third from each channel. It doesn't look the same as either of the other two starting points for the different methods. The channel mixer is an incredibly sophisticated tool with a lot of different options. It has a total of 15 different presets and nine different color filter options. Another of the tools in available inside of the channel mixer is this color filter, which is right below the presets. There are a total of nine different filters. What these do is provide an algorithm that imitates how your photo would look if you had put a filter in front of your lens when you took the photograph in the first place. Um, as you can see, the different color filters can have pretty different effects um, this will modify what the percentages are for these. These will not, when you use a preset, it, it combines with the preset. It is not a replacement for the preset, but it does alter the percentages that the preset would normally have when you um, use both of them. And that's I don't believe it's linear. It seems to be modified. The presets of these presets, 11 of these are set percentages of the red, green, and blue channels. So landscape changes it from 33% red to 66, takes the greens down to 24%, and makes the blues 10%. Uh, they will always add to 100 um, with the presets. The four that are not set amounts or are adjustable from the initial set amounts are the absolute RGB, the relative RGB, the absolute ROY GC BPM, and the relative ROY GC BPM. The ROYGCBPM stands for red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, purple, and magenta. Um, the difference between absolute and relative. You notice that with the relative, you will always keep this total at 100%, no matter where you put the 
individual sliders. It will equalize them so that the total will always be 100%. And what that means is that the overall brightness of the image will be the same as your original image. In the absolute options for these, the total will be different, can be different from 100%. If the total is less than 100%, that means the image has gotten darker than it was in the beginning. And if the total is greater, then the overall brightness of the image will be increased over your initial starting point. The uh, RGB ones, you can adjust the individual color channels um, using the sliders. and just to get different looks, whatever you prefer. With the ROYGCBPM, you have the three color channels, but there's also an algorithm that will adjust individual colors between the three channels. So for example, uh, yellow. The center of the flowers is kind of yellow and there's yellow in the leaves. You can see that by moving the yellow slider, I can change the emphasis in the picture. Um, for this, there are two choices. There's a special effects and a linear. Um, you just have to experiment to see which suits your image the best. Um, and so that gives you just an amazing amount of flexibility. You can get some really wild looks. You can get some very sophisticated looks. Um, again, this, this tool also has the gamma correction um, to imitate. I don't know much about papers, but to imitate maybe some type of paper that was more sensitive to green than in red or something. Um, you can do a curve to make the image have more contrast before it starts the black and white process. Um, and you could add a curve that's, add, that's um, adjusted after. Um, say this one maybe will brighten up the darks. Um, after you finished it all up. And so one thing I'll note is that these, these the gamma, the before and after curve, if you switch to a different method, those curves will stay with you. They, they stay the same from method to method and you have to readjust them if you want to adjust them for the different methods. But that is a quick rundown of this tool Obviously, it has an enormous amount of flexibility and power, and you can do some very, very creative work using black and whites with the black and white tool inside of raw therapy. I hope you have some fun with it. Thank you. Bye.